So there's no football for Manchester United after the game against Brentford was postponed because of coronavirus. Well, eh, hopefully it doesn't get to that situation again where we get to empty stadiums, touch wood, all that, because that was terrible. What I want to do now, we've got a few days spare, right? Let's take a look ahead to this January transfer window that's coming up. What would be the dream transfer window for Manchester United in January? What I'm going to do in this video is run through what my dream window would be for United as well as us in the few days time, maybe taking a look at what Ralph Ragnick's plan is. And I want to know in the comments what your ideal transfer window would be for Manchester United, both in terms of ins and signings and in terms of people leaving the club too. Make sure you drop a like on the video by the end of this. If you do enjoy it, I hope you do. But let's dive straight into it. And of course, we all know that Ralph Ragnick wants to sign a midfielder for Manchester United. He's made that very, very clear. And there's a few names on the list. Uh, Jude Bellingham. Of course, it would be a dream, but I don't think it's going to happen. Calvin Phillips was another name on that list of three midfielders mentioned, but he's just had surgery. He plays for Leeds. He's out for two months. That's not going to happen. The name that could happen, and that is Amadou Haidara. Now, he obviously plays for Leipzig. He's got a link to the Ragnik past. And if you take a quick look at his stats, so we've already done this before when I did the Amadou Haidara full story. But look at his contributions towards the goals that he's doing. You know, he's overall very progressively passing the ball forward. In terms of his pressures and his blocks and his tackles, he's not as good unless you start comparing him to uh, sort of attacking midfielders and wingers and he becomes much, much better. But overall, Amadou Haidara has quite, a, quite an all-rounded game. And he's certainly, as I said, look, if you look at his progressive passes per 90, he's in the top 10% of midfielders. Progressive carries, top 20%. Touches in the attacking penalty area, top 10%. Progressive passes received, top 15%. He's certainly a midfielder that can help United take it forward. And look, while his, pressure, I mean, his pressures and his tackles are okay, his interceptions might be poor, his blocks, top 10%. He's got a bit of an all-round to his game. Assist-wise, not very good, but he certainly takes plenty of shots. Expected assists is very high, so obviously he's not been playing with good enough strikers around him to make more of the opportunities that he's creating. For me, Amadou Haidara, I think would be a perfect signing for Manchester United. And that for me is why I've got him down. Going down as a buy, not a buy, a buy. I, I think United should be looking at buying him. I don't know what the price would be. What would you think? You think 30 million, would that be fair? 30 and I can't type apparently. 30 million for Haidara, would you think that would be a fair price for him in January? And do you think United could get him? Do you think that Leipzig would let him go? Or do you think there's no chance of us signing him. By the way, big up this replica shirt. Ragnick's German Reds. I couldn't resist. I think this must be the first time I've actually worn a football shirt on a, on, a, on a video on YouTube. Aren't you lucky? I like it. I hope you like it too. But yeah, 30 million for Haidara, I think could be a fantastic signing. Now, there are other midfielders that have been linked with Manchester United, right? And it'll be unfair of me to do this video and to ignore them. And of course, we've got to speak about Frankie de Jong. Now, we know what sort of footballer Frankie de Jong is. And he's a bit different to Haidara. Look at the greens here. This is his scouting report over on fbref.com. He's outrageous. Like If you look at you know his pressures, his tackles, he's, he's, he's very... And that's not his game. That is not his game. This is progressive passing, progressive carries, the top 5%, dribbles, top 10%, touches in the attacking area, top 5%. Outrageous. Expected assists, top 5%. But look, he's top 5 or top 10% in all of these progression statistics. And that's where someone like Frankie de Jong would be an incredible signing for Manchester United. But if we're being realistic here, what we're saying for him, we're going to say I would be 80 million plus. That's what I would say for Haidara, for, sorry, not for Haidara, for Frankie de Jong. So I think there's no chance that we buy him. No buy. No buy. I just think it'll be too much. In this January transfer window, uh, his dad has been speaking about Manchester saying the weather is crap, been speaking, uh, I don't know who else, I think he's talking about Bayern Munich as well. Um, De Jong would clearly be a fantastic signing for Manchester United. You've only got to take a look at his stats and see how he would slot alongside Fred. Fred could be the disruptor, the person who does all the pressures, the, the pressures, the tackles, the interceptions and the blocks and allow someone like De Jong to go and just focus on progressive passing, on getting on the edge of the op opponent's box. And that's something that I think Haidara could do very well as well. I want to do a, something a bit more in-depth on Haidara, actually, because I've taken a look at him a few times. But I think 30, 30 to 40 million? What, 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 what do you think would be a fair price for Haidara? You let me know in the comments below. But out of the two, I think Haidara might... 
I don't know which one would be a better signing. You let me know what you think about that in the comments below. But in terms of a realistic signing, I think you've probably got to put Haidara in that category ahead of De Jong. But there's another name we've got to speak about. And that is Bubakar Kamara. Now, he is, I believe he's 20 years old. He plays for Olympic Marseille. He's been linked to Manchester United in the last few days. Now, he's been linked, but it's been a little bit tentative. It's kind of more the fact that he's available on a free transfer. He's been compared to Paul Pogba. If we were to take a look at his stats here, we can see there that, you know, he's not particularly contributing in terms of X, you know, XG, XA, in terms of his expected assists or his expected goals. But he's got a decent pass completion. His numbers aren't that impressive, really. But realistically, he's a young player playing inside a Marseille team. And when you're looking at sort of expected assist X, Y, Z, those numbers are going to be lower if the players around you aren't as good. That's something you have to take into consideration. So what do you think about Bubakar Kamara? If we can get him on, a, we can't get him on a free transfer. He's available for a free in the summer. So maybe you can go in there and you could say, right, okay, Bubakar Kamara, you go there and you go, yeah, we definitely buy him. And let's try and get him for, I don't know, someone like 10 to 15 mil. Maybe just 10 mil. 10, not 10 mil. I've got, got pressing N instead of M. Anyway, 10 million. Do you think that will be a fair price for him? Clearly, we all know this. Central midfield is, if we're going to strengthen during the January transfer window, it's going to be in central midfield. It's not going to be anywhere else, in my opinion. The January transfer window is, oh, it's so hard to sign players. Hell, man, we signed Bruno Fernandes. If you want to go and sign the players that you need, you can and will go and sign the players that you need. For me, out of the three options that I've mentioned there, we've got Amadou Haidara, we've got Frank De Jong, and we've got just Bubakar Kamara. You can, you, you can speak about Jude Bellingham if you want, but it's unrealistic for January. I don't think he's going to leave Dortmund this season. You could speak about Calvin Phillips, but he's out for a couple of months, and I don't think he would be realistically what we need anyway. He's too, he's the opposite of a progressive footballer. He's someone who's just solely there to break up play, and I don't think that's what we need. But if we were to sign Haidara, I mean, our starting 11 could look fantastic straight away. Just go full screen so you can see David De Gea involved in there as well. With the back four at the moment, as it stands, Delot and Tellez are our two starting choice fullbacks. It is what it is. Veran is definitely going to come in as our starting choice centre back when he is fit. Maguire alongside him with the midfield two there are Fred and Haidara. And as I said, it's a com it, that's a duo that I could definitely see complementing each other pretty damn well, if I'm being completely honest. I think Fred would probably drop a little bit deeper. Haidara would then for therefore be allowed to sort of operate inside these sort of zones here. In you know, in front of um in front of the semi sem semicircle? Center circle there, bridging that gap, but also having the sort of tenacity and the energy to cover and run back. He wouldn't be he would very much be a box-to-box -box midfielder. And that, for me, is why I think he would be the perfect, perfect signing for Manchester United to sort of complete that midfield setup. And also, as we've said, you know, he, Ralph Ragnick has brought in Chris Armas uh, from New York Red Bulls. He's brought in Sasha Lense as his sports psychologist. As it stands, it's those two that have come in. He needs to bring the coaches into the squad to allow his coaching of that system to be more complete. What he needs is somebody inside that starting eleven. Who plays, because as we saw against Norwich, right, that was a huge drop-off. Huge drop-off. And then Randick said, no, that's not what we played to do. I was completely surprised by it. So what he, know, he, he knows, I think, what we can see is that it's going to be inconsistent, this system inside that team. He needs someone who can be as general on the pitch. And that's why I think someone like Hadara makes a lot more sense than someone like Frankie de Jong. Even if de Jong would be a fantastic signing, I think Hadara would suit the needs of what Ragnick wants right now. And that's why I'm putting him there. So I, in, my, in my opinion, it will be the dream signing in the January transfer window will be Amadou Haidara. Let me know what you think about that. But look, as I said, January is not just about signings. And more importantly, maybe, is I, maybe I should have done this video the other way around. Because it's, I think it's, you man, you man, Manchester United squad is massively bloated. We know it's bloated. And there are a lot of players there that aren't really going to have a future. So if we're going to sign any players, maybe we've got to sell players first. And there are a few players that we need to have a discussion about in terms of January, and there's only one place you can start. Paul Pogba, man. What's your stance on Paul Pogba now? Paul Pogba, as we know, is going to leave Manchester United on a free transfer in the summer if he doesn't sign a contract between now and the end of the season. His agent, Mina Raiola, has been chatting grease like he permanently does. Hate the guy. Players love him because he gets what they want. Do you think Paul Pogba will sign a new contract? I don't think he will. So there's only one thing I would want Manchester United to do in January if we can. And that's sell Paul Pogba. And I realistically, I don't know. 
what a price for Paul Pogba would be. Do you think there's any chance we could get 20 to 30 million for Paul Pogba, given that he's going to be free in the summer? I think there, there probably is a chance. And this is obviously going to cause debate. This is going to be the biggest debate out of all the players that I'm talking about in terms of leaving. But if Paul Pogba, I mean, I, I've said this before and I've said it again, I, I'm done with Paul Pogba and the, and the circus around it. I think Manchester United are moving forward as a club with Ralph Ragnick, with the direction that we're in now. And you know what? Ragnick, when he was speaking about Martial's agent, I'll speak about Martial soon, when he was saying, look, I'm not speaking to an agent through the press. If a player wants to leave, he can come and tell me. But if he doesn't, then I'm not going to do anything. And I feel that's a similar situation with Paul Pogba. It's always done through the press. It's always done through Mineroyola and exerting influence and just underhand tactics. And I'm, I'm done with it. I'm done with it. So if we can, I would personally like United to sell Paul Pogba in January. Look, imagine that. Selling Paul Pogba for 20, 30 mil and bringing Hardara in for 30 mil. You're telling me United squad wouldn't be more balanced after that. I think it absolutely would be. As great as Paul Pogba is and has been an occasion for Manchester United, I'm just done with it. Now, next player who I might well be done with as well, and that's Anthony Martial. I say might well be done with. I may as well just get this on before we start the conversation. It's not very difficult there. That conversation is sell. Martial was a player who he hasn't hit the heights that he hit in that first season under Van Hal. He did it one year in Solskjaer's first full year. It's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. But apart from that, Martial's just not done it enough as a proper number nine for Manchester United. Now, what price do you think you could get for Anthony Martial? Again, I'm probably going to put that down in the same sort of similar category as, as Paul Pogba. I reckon 20, 30 million. Now, you see Arsenal right now have just gone and stripped Aubameyang of the captaincy. Uh, after they stripped Xhaka of the captaincy and gave it to Aubameyang, they've now stripped Aubameyang. That's quite funny, but it's Arsenal Football Club for you. Um, I reckon Anthony Martial would definitely be on Arsenal's radar. It seems like a perfect Arsenal-type signing. Of course, could go Newcastle being linked with there as well. But Martial, I think I'm just, again, I'm done. I'm ready to move on from Manchester United with Anthony Martial. If you go to the summer where if we, we, we get rid of Martial and Cavani was to leave uh, at the end of his uh, contract, then we bring someone else in. That's, it's a perfect summer to rejuvenate and re-energize our attacking options. And for me, in the, in, in the January transfer window, in an ideal world, we'd sell Anthony Martial for 20, 30 million and we reinvest again, pointing that 20, 30 mil for him, bringing in Haidara for 30 mil. That is a massive improvement in Manchester United's squad, even if Paul Pogba was to stay. And the third player, there's three main players on this list for January. And of course, you can't not talk about Jesse Lingard. What's your opinion on Jesse? Eh? Do you think Jesse Lingard should be sold? Do you think Jesse Lingard will be sold? My opinion is quite clear and it's quite easy. Again, selling Jesse Lingard in January is the ideal situation for Manchester United. We're going to lose him on a free in the summer. He doesn't want to sign a contract. Let's not beg a player to sign a contract if he doesn't want to sign a contract. I'm done with that. In terms of how much you get for Jesse Lingard, though, that's a, that's a different question. You're probably, probably kind of going to be lucky to get 10 million based on the fact that we don't have a contract with him. And whether it's Newcastle, whether it's West Ham, they both know that they can get him for free in the summer. Now, Newcastle have got money galore. So a billion to their owners is literally a, a, a drop in the ocean. It's ridiculous. So... 10 million for Jesse Lingard going to Newcastle. I think it'd be good for his career to be the sort of big fish in a small pond. Exciting to be start of what could be a fantastic project at Newcastle as far as the player is concerned. And for me, it would suit Manchester United to... Now, you, you might disagree with, him, with me here. You might be like, Sam, you know, Jesse Lingard's a good squad player. Keep him until the end of the season. Let's see what goes on after that. And I, I wouldn't be massively averse to it. But for me, in a dream situation, we'd be able to sell Jesse Lingard 10 million. We'd be able to sell Anthony Martial 20, 30 million. Perfect. And we'll be able to sell Paul Pogba 20, 30 million. That's what? That's between 50 to 80 million pounds that we could get in January. Three players off the books, three big wages off the books. Bring someone like Amadou Haidara in for 30 mil. Hey, if you really want to go out there and improve Manchester United's midfield options, get someone like Buba, Buba was it Bubaka? Bubaka Kamara for 10 million. That's, that's a more balanced squad overall for Manchester United. Now, there are other names on that list that we need to discuss, of course, because this is such a bloated squad at Manchester United. I've just spoken about Pop, Burt, Martial and Lingard there, but there, there are far more names on that list. And I'm just going to make this one a little bit simpler. Run through here and I've got a big red cross in my hand. Not actually in my hand, but I'm going to draw it on the players that I think Manchester United should be looking at getting rid of in January. Now, De Gea, there's just question marks about this. Dean Henderson, big question marks because... Should he go on loan to 
Ajax if it's possible. Yeah, it is possible. But Van der Sar has actually denied it is that they are interested in him. I think there's no point in Manchester United signing Tom Heaton as a third choice goalkeeper when you've already got Lee Grant, right? Because you've already got David De Gea as your number one. I mean, it was actually going to be Dean Henderson being number one, but he got COVID. So there's no point having four goalkeepers. So you may as well get one off the books. And if it's Dean Henderson going on loan and playing in the Ajax or playing somewhere and improving, then I think that would be a good thing for United and a good thing for him. He'd come back a better goalkeeper. Now we go down here and we look at the defenders. Now, of course, this goes without saying, and I don't mean this in a really horrible, nasty way, but no Phil Jones. If Manchester United can loan Phil Jones out in January, good. Let him play football. It will benefit his career. It will benefit United to have him off the books. That one's a very, very simple one. Lindelof by Maguire going nowhere. Varane's going nowhere. De Lot, Shaw, Tellez, Wambasaka, Brandon Williams is already out on loan. Twanzebe, Tedemengi, he, he pressed, didn't he? When he played the other day. I'd like to see how he can get on this season. But not that many defensive changes. It's just Phil Jones that we need to get rid of down there. But in midfield, there's a lot. And there's three names that I've, well, there's two names I've already talked about here. And I think if Manchester United can get money for Paul Pogba in January, we should be getting rid of him. If we can get money for Jesse Lingard in January, we should be getting rid of him. And Andreas Pereira, he's already out on loan. He's pushing for a permanent deal. We don't really need to have a conversation about him. Andreas Pereira, we should be getting rid of him. Question marks indeed over one matter. Uh, I, was, I questioned why, why he was given that sort of contract extension, but he was. Man United you know, like doing that. I think he should be let go in the summer. And it's, again, it's not a disrespectful thing, but I think it will be... A, and I, I don't think that's going to happen in January, though. So I think in terms of January, we're looking at Paul Pogba and we're looking at Jesse Lingard. And Andreas Pereira, well, maybe he can leave on a permanent deal. That leaves us with Ahmad, Fred, Bruno, Palistri, who's already out on loan, Matic. Now, again, there's Matic. We're talking more about the summer there. But Matic in the summer, I think that would definitely be the right thing for United to move him on and bring in a new alternative. Van der Beek, will he leave in January? There's huge question marks about that. I didn't actually think about that. Mm, I don't know. It's kind of a new system. It's a new system that should suit him a bit more. Bruno Fernandes is out of form, so he should get more game time. It all depends on whether Donny van der Beek himself pushes for this move. If van der Beek pushes for this move, he'll get the move. But I don't think United will force him out of the door. We go down here and we look at the forwards. There's only a couple, well, there's a couple we can have a conversation about. There's one there that I've already mentioned, and that's Anthony Martial. If United can get money for Martial that's good money in January and maybe we can reinvest it, it would suit us to let him go and it would suit him and his career for him to move on as well. There's question marks around Edinson Cavani in January. Now, I think if he was to leave, that wouldn't be because Manchester United want him to leave. I want Cavani to stay until the end of the season. I wouldn't want to see us get rid of him. Uh, ideally, we, we won't, but it all depends on whether or not like an offer from Barcelona comes in. That's who he's being linked with or anybody else. But ideally. I hope that we keep Edison Cavani. And the rest, they're definitely all staying. So if I was to run through everything that I've done here in terms of outs, I think Dean Henderson going out on loan, that will probably be a smart move. It's to the right club and he plays for a full rest of the season because right now, De Gea is just number one out and out. And we've already got two backups. What's the point in having four goalkeepers? Fenders, Phil Jones, please. Just if we can, loan him out. I don't think, we, I don't think we're able to sell him in January, but loan him in January get a full half a season under his belt and somebody will buy him and then we can say goodbye to Phil Jones. Midfield is a lot of movement. I think Paul Pogba, in an ideal world, Manchester United will sell him for money because I don't think he's going to sign a contract and therefore, I don't want him at my football club anymore. He doesn't want to be here. Simple as that. I mean, it doesn't matter how good you are, man. If you don't want to be at United, don't be at United. Simple. Jesse Lingard, if we can get money for him in January, ideal. Uh, Andres Pereira, well, he's already out on loan. He's going to leave on a permanent deal. And Matter, I don't think he'll go in January, but I think he should at some point. Matic in the summer and Donny. Donny, Donny, Donny. Donny van der Beek. So rude, I actually I made you Oni now. Crossed out your D. Sorry, mate. Um, if he wants to leave, he will leave in January. And I don't think... Will we step in? Do you think we'll stand in his way? Do you think we block another move for him? I don't know. Up front, Anthony Martial. Quite simple. If we can sell him, I want United to sell Anthony Martial. I think we can get 20, 30 mil for him. Oh, let me hide that. You saw that. Um, and again... Jesse Lingard, I think we can get 10 mil for him. And in an ideal world, I think we'd sell Paul Pogba, get 20, 30 mil. Then we've got money to invest in someone like Haidara. I don't think we've got the money to spy De Jong in January. I mean, look, we could get Bubaka Kamara and really improve our midfield options. But that would be my dream transfer window in January for United to get rid of a few players off the books. I don't think there's a future at United for Lingard or Pogba or Martial. 
So if we can get money for all three in January, two players of which we're going to lose for free in the summer, then good, get some money for them. Move them on, replace them in the squad. We need to, we need to reduce our squad at the, at the same time as we need to improve our midfield. So getting rid of all of those and bringing someone like Hardara in, that is a far more balanced Manchester United squad after January than it is before it. That's my own opinion. You, you let me know what you think about that. Quite an in-depth video, more of a conversation, I suppose. But Haidara would be my ideal midfield signing. I can really see that suiting Ragnik, suiting the system. And as we saw against Norwich, we need someone on the pitch who can really be the general on the pitch. So those sorts of dips in performances aren't allowed because it can't happen. If, you play that, if, we, if we were to play like that against Brentford in the game that now got cancelled, Brentford probably would have beaten us. Maybe that actually helps us. But that's the player I like United to sign. And I want to see us sort of trim the squad in January. And in an ideal world, that means leaving Paul Popper, Martial and Lingard out of the squad and selling them all. You let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. I'm going to be doing plenty of transfer videos. As I said, I'm going to take a look at like Ragnik's actual plan as well, rather than just my dream. You can let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Take it easy.